Hi, this is Tom Stewart with Cleaning Business Today. This is another of our continuing series that we're doing uh, every day at 5 o'clock Eastern on our Cleaning Business Today page, uh, talking about the coronavirus and how we as responsible cleaning business owners uh, should be adapting to this and seeing where opportunities are and leveraging our businesses to create maximum value for all stakeholders because we are in a unique position in a very unique time that this is unprecedented we uh, have a level of concern in this country that uh, for a lot of us we've never uh, never experienced in our lifetime it's affecting the stock markets it's a putting a potential strain on our healthcare system we're seeing things in other parts of the world that maybe we've never ever seen before so we don't know what tomorrow holds but there are some things that we do know and some things that we can probably anticipate or at least plan for. And because we are cleaning professionals in an industry that is going inside of people's homes, um, it's a lot of, it's a mixed bag of, of, of what all that means. But if we make the right decisions and do the hard stuff now, um, we can create a lot of value for ourselves and uh, like our you know, clients, like all of the stakeholders, really. This is, uh, this is a unique time. So I'm gonna jump into uh, a, a deck I have here and I'm going to uh, briefly go over uh, some of the opportunities that we discussed yesterday that we as house cleaning uh, businesses have in these uh, unique times. Um, you know, we are, uh, you know, hygienic house cleaning, rather, where we're not just cleaning for appearance, but we're cleaning for health. We have an opportunity to do that. Um, and we do, we all do that to, to, to various degrees. But wherever we are with that, we have an opportunity to really uh, focus on finer techniques of how infections spread and areas in the home that are uh, being touched a lot, what type of products we use and, and how we go about uh, providing service to our clients to where we could be uh, minimizing the chance of infections being uh, shared in their home. And for a lot of people, they're going to see that as a tremendous value. If they've got a choice between just having their home cleaned where somebody's pushing a vacuum and taking out the trash or having their home hygienically cleaned where they know high touch areas are are being sanitized and disinfected and all the proper protocols are being taken to uh, reduce the chance that there are pathogens in that home, then that's a, that's a, that's a heck of a differentiator, which kind of gets into the second point of being able to decommoditize our businesses. Um, a lot of consumers just go to the, uh, you know, the internet, they go to Google, they, see whoever has a bunch of reviews and whoever tops up, pops up first and just orders service without really thinking a lot more about you know the health aspect of it. And typically the people who are really, really great at marketing are getting a lot of that business. Um, maybe they're using hygienic cleaning and, and cleaning for health, maybe they aren't. Um, but if you can adopt practices where you can explain to prospective clients how you can reduce the chance of them uh, getting any pathogen, including a coronavirus. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people out there. They're going to be really, uh, really interested in, in hearing that story and using a service like that. Another opportunity, uh, a lot of us are struggling really hard to find qualified labor right now. It's reasonable to think based upon, you know, what's happening with uh, hospitality and travel and like all the major, you know, events, conventions and so forth that are, that are being canceled and the airlines pulling back and, uh, you know, retails being affected. There's a lot of things that's being affected that would stand to figure that there's going to be um, more available labor on the market that will be qualified to, to, to work in our industry. So, that's a real opportunity as well. Um, we've got some challenges that we're going to have to deal with, but some of the challenges that we've been dealing with for a long time might uh, be reduced, if not go away. Uh, there's some really good uh, public relations opportunities out of all of this too. If you've got a, a cleaning business that is 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 doing this in a responsible way and has an action plan to uh, clean homes in a hygienic way to reduce the chance of pathogens being 
shared in that home and you're training your people and doing all the right stuff, you got a story to tell. And you need to take your communications that you're, you're sharing with your, your, your clients and share it with all the local news outlets as well. Because guess what? The local news wants to talk about coronavirus right now. And they're looking for anybody that uh, they can call a subject matter expert that they can put on TV or do a radio interview or quote in some type of article that they're writing. And if you do that, you're basically differentiating your business again in a, in a very competitive space and putting yourself out there, though, that for consumers that are worried about the coronavirus would be interested in your business. And you know, you would stand to figure if we're creating more value by adding uh, hygienic cleaning and reducing the chance of infection uh, contracted in the home that you can get a higher price point. If the labor market gets more favorable, maybe get some, some, some better margins there as well. Um, let's talk about smart business moves and each one of these bullet items has a whole lot into it and we're going to be talking about each one of these in, in, in the days ahead, but I just wanted to lay some of this out here to get you thinking about it. Um, just to begin with, you as a cleaning business have a major role to play in how society is going to be dealing with the coronavirus. Uh, as a cleaning business, I mean, cleaning is the first line of defense in infection control. And what we do plays a, a big part in terms of, you know, what pathogens are left on surface, surfaces and the chances of people picking up, uh, you know, germs and touching their face and making themselves sick. I mean, in, in, in a simple way. So if we clean in a way that reduces uh, those, uh, those pathogens on surfaces, we're making for a safer environment and that's our job. And if we start approaching our business that way, we, I mean, if, if we expand how we're doing that in our businesses, that's a big part of how we can contribute towards fighting uh, coronavirus and creating value for, for, for clients. We need a plan. Once we figure out what our role is and understand that, how are we going to do it? You know, how are we going to change our cleaning procedures? Uh, what new products might we need to introduce? Uh, new equipment, new techniques? Uh, do we need additional personal protection equipment? All of that's a big part of it. How are we going to communicate? All of this is huge. And I'm going to have another slide here talking about communication in just a minute. It's third down on the list, but it also needs to be at the top of the list because we need to be communicating now because your community is scared, your clients are scared, your employees are scared, and they want to hear from the people at the top of, of your business, you know, what's going on and what are we doing to deal with, with, with these threats. And if you get out in front of it, you're creating a sense of, of, of trust, a sense of comfort. You're, 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 you're putting yourself in a position where uh, the marketplace and, I mean, all your stakeholders are going to have trust in you and what you're doing. And that's what's going to allow you to, 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 to be successful in these, uh, these new times. Training is going to be really important. You're going to want to make sure that you train all your cleaning technicians and all the proper techniques to uh, break the chain of infection in a home and how they do that in a responsible way where they're uh, protecting themselves. And we'll talk more about that in, in, in later discussions. Public relations, we talked about that just a moment ago. Contingency planning. This goes in a lot of different directions. If you uh, find yourself in a situation where you've got employees that are sick and they can't come to work, what uh, you know, what, what do you need to do to make sure that you know they're being taken care of? If you find yourself in a situation where your your income might be taking a hit, you might lose some business for a while. I mean, it's possible if you do this right. I think that you can actually get more business. But if you did lose some business, you know, how would you manage your business? What, what expenses would you cut? What, what additional cash might you need uh, to, to, to deal with that? Um, doing all of these things. This is a fastly developing story. We're learning. There's a lot. Golly day. The stuff that we don't know goes on forever. And we're learning more every day. So, so the point is, out of everything that we just talked about here, we need to be looking at it and asking ourselves, what did we learn today? And implement, make changes uh, into, you know, our, our plan and how we're communicating and how we're training and the PR, all of that. 
needs to be changing, you know, arguably on a daily basis. So that's what, what I mean by repeat, do all of that and just start all over again. And we're going to be talking about each one of these points more in detail and in, in subsequent discussions. But I want to just take just a minute and talk about the communications plan. We touched upon this yesterday, but if you don't have one, you need one, you need it now. And we'll figure all of this other stuff out in more detail. And as we do, we can modify our communication plan, but you need to say something. Give answers to these basic questions. Give it your best answer at the moment. You know, how do we uh, keep our employees safe? How do we keep our clients safe? How do we keep our clients home safe? What are we, what are we doing to, to contribute to, to that? Um, you know, what do we do if we have an employee who we think might be sick? What do we want our clients to do if they think that they might be sick? Bottom line is sick employees don't need to be coming to work and we don't need to be cleaning for, for, for sick clients. There's a link here in Cleaning Business Today. We have a page for uh, coronavirus downloads. If you've never been to Cleaning Business Today, it's cleaningbusinessstoday.com. Uh, landing page looks like this. There's a really cool article here that we posted last week on the coronavirus that gets into a whole lot of detail. I'm going to show you here on the right, there's a way to subscribe. And we have a newsletter that goes out. We're going to be pushing more information out there as well. If you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, please do that. That helps us help you. Um, I'll show you this this article here real quick. It gets into some some underlying science behind things that we need to know. Some of it's a little bit techy, but it talks about uh, the chain of infection and what that means and what we need to do as as cleaning businesses to break the chain of infection. It gives a lot of good information. If you haven't read that, I would encourage you to do it. And the link that I was showing you before is coronavirus-downloads. Um, that'll take you to this page. I've got some example letters for the communication that we were talking about that we use in Castle Keepers. There's a really cool handout here for uh, proper hand washing techniques, which is really important. One of the most important things we can encourage everybody to do is wash their hands frequently and wash them in a manner that is removing as much soil as possible. Um, We've got a Word document that's in a, a generic letter that's kind of modeled after the letter that we did in Castle Keepers, but you can download that and change it and use it, you know, in your own business. Um, we've also got a link here to a couple other resources. Uh, in the article I was showing you, we were talking about the chain of infection. There's a whole lot of science that goes in behind this, and you don't need to know all of that day one, but as you get into this, especially you know, as customers start asking questions and your employees start asking questions, you need to establish trust. And a huge part of establishing trust is, is demonstrating that, that you have the knowledge. And the more that, you know, you can expand your vocabulary to talk about things like infection control and pathogens and talk about, you know, the, the, the virus that causes SARS as a, uh, RNA wrapped virus. I mean, it's a lot. We can, we're going to coach you on all of this stuff as, as we get into this. But the more you can speak that language, the more confident you're going to be, the more comforted your clients are going to be, and the more confident your employees are going to have in you. Uh, this professional house cleaning technician's manual, basically, a lot of what you we had in that article came out of that book. Uh, myself, my wife Janice, and a handful of other really uh, Pe you know, people more talented than I am actually help write that, and um, it's linked there if you want to want to want to buy that. You certainly can, and we also have a PR uh, example where Bruce Vance, one of the authors of the uh, Professional House Cleaning Manual, um, did a radio interview uh, in his local market in Raleigh, just to kind of give you an example of what that looks like. So. That's uh, plenty enough for today. We'll be back uh, tomorrow at this time. I hope you found this uh, helpful and useful. Um, you guys can, can, can hit us up uh, through Facebook or send us an email, either one. We'll be glad to help however we can. Thanks. See you tomorrow.